you? It is your friend Naomi and you've come at the right time. It is my birthday. I don't know if you've noticed, but my mom came and she helped me get rid of the early 2000s in my kitchen. So everything's a little brighter and more modern and you'll have to tell me what you think. I hope you're hungry because today I'm going to teach you to make my birthday cake so you can celebrate with me. It's key lime pie birthday cake. That's right. It is tangy and delicious and I hope you stick around. So if you're ready to get started, let's go. Okay, so before we get started, I want you to know that this recipe makes a small bundt pan or about 24 cupcakes. If you're looking to make it more impressive, you can always double the ingredients. I also want you to know that I'm always trying to look out for our egg-free, dairy-free friends, but if you can do eggs and dairy, I will include instructions in the link below for how to do this with your eggs, oil, and water like normal. First, you are going to take one 18.25 ounce box of yellow cake mix. If you're not gluten-free, use whatever brand you happen to like. I am gluten-free, so I'm using Better Batter because I own the company. Happy birthday to me. Um, but you can use any good cup for cup cake mix. Just set that aside for now. And you are gonna put in a blender one cup of beans. Don't drain them, just dump them. And you're going to do a quarter cup of lime juice. Now, you can use key limes, which I mean, that would make it key lime pie flavored. Or if you cannot access key limes, you could use canned key lime juice, which is what I did because I live in Pennsylvania, or you could use real limes, no big deal. You're also going to add three quarters of a cup of water. And we are gonna zhuzh that up. Okay, so you're gonna just basically blend it until it's smooth. At this point, it's probably not gonna smell the greatest. It's gonna smell like beans that got lime juice in them. But trust me, once it bakes, it's gonna be amazing, okay? And you are going to put in, how about I don't? We all know this is gonna explode if I don't cut it. Or even if I do cut it. Don't do that, that's not the safe way to do that. But I can't find my scissors today, so that's what I did. Okay, so we're gonna take that box of cake mix. And our bean puree. And we are gonna just gently stir that until it is smooth. You don't want to over mix this because too much air in this, especially with gluten free, is going to cause it to collapse while it's cooling and nobody likes a collapsed cake. Then you get pound cake, which honestly isn't that bad, but really nobody wants a collapsed cake. So as you can see, it just looks like cake batter and it smells like key lime pie, which is my favorite. Okay. Okay, magic of television, everything is magically cleaned. And I forgot to grease my pan. How old am I? What, did you ask how old I am? I am definitely 159 years old. Oh, great, don't I? Okay, so pretend like you already did the greasing the pan part. You're just gonna pour your prepared cake mix right into the pan. And honestly, you could leave the extra uh, but gluten free is expensive, so I am gonna just put all of the batter in the pan to make sure it rises the most and I get the most cake. Okay. Once again, if you can do eggs, I have included the instructions for you. The texture will be slightly different with a vegan cake versus a non vegan cake, but not a huge amount of difference. All right. And we are gonna place that in a 350 degree oven for about an hour. It's gonna depend on whether you have a gluten-free cake or not. Gluten-free takes longer 
and how hot your kitchen is and how good your oven is, but set it for about 50 minutes and start to check it around then. Sometimes it'll be 45, sometimes it'll be 55. You are going to bake your cake for an hour and then you're gonna test it with a sharp object, okay? Either a cake tester or a knife. You're gonna stick it in your cake, which will be in the cake pan, until it comes out clean. But it's my birthday and I don't wanna sit around for an hour, so I made this cake earlier and we're gonna just skip to the next part while the batter bakes, okay? So we're setting this aside, yum. And I'm gonna teach you how to make the best part, the part that makes it really taste like a key lime pie. And that is the glaze, okay? Well, hello, friends. Okay, so for our glaze, we are going to use a 12 ounce can of either condensed milk, again, you can do dairy if you go for it, or cream of coconut. Now, most cream of coconut comes in a 15 ounce can, so you're going to need to leave some in the can. You can use it to make a pina colada later. If you like pina coladas. Okay, sorry, the key lime. Okay, anyway, we're gonna pour that in. Now, obviously, cream of coconut's gonna taste different than condensed milk, okay? But, I mean, sorry, that's the way it is. But if you're dairy-free like me, you yeah, live with what you can live with. I think there are some recipes for a vegan condensed milk out there, but they're not mine, so, you know, I'll try to find one for you. You are going to add to that the juice of a couple key limes, or half of a lime. It's about a quarter cup of juice, give or take. Okay. And if I can find my zester. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna find my zester now. I'm just the mom in the kitchen and it's my birthday and I forgot everything. Wasn't in my Mary Poppins story. Okay, and the zest of half a lime. Pretend I'm competent. Pretend I do this for a living and not just because I love you, okay? Oh, it's so good. I'm gonna save some of the lime to do the garnish on the top. And to that, you're gonna add question mark amount of powdered sugar. Now, it can be anywhere from a cup and a half up. If you are using condensed milk, it might be a little less. If you're using cream of coconut, it's definitely gonna be more. You're gonna mix it in until it forms a nice thick glaze. As you can see right now, it's just liquid. Whisking. And this is really to taste you could do a nice thin glaze that just covers it like a Krispy Kreme donut, or a nice thick glaze that drips down for the photographs that we all know that I need to take to make you want to eat this. You can see it's thicker. Oh look, I magically got more. Okay. Be a little bit more careful here. I don't want to, I don't want to end up with Play-Doh. Honestly, this is just by eye, and it is to personal preference. I wish I could give you a solid amount, but I can't. If you accidentally add too much, just thin it out with a little bit more lime juice. Okay. For me, this is the right consistency, okay? Now you're going to gild the lily. Now, before you start, make sure that your icing has no lumps, because nothing looks worse than lumpy glaze, okay? You are going to take a spoon, a spoon or a spatula, and you're going to generously lay it on the very top and it should if it's the right consistency 
can see start to drip and then kind of stop itself. And now we are going to just garnish it with a little bit of fresh lime zest for color and festivity. You could add just a couple sprinkles of graham cracker crumbs to the top. If you are gluten free, use your favorite brand. Or you could use my amazing graham cracker recipe that I posted on my site. It's amazing. Anyway, that's it. Well, I don't know what to tell you. It really was that easy. If you like this recipe and want to get more, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I do what I do for the love of you, but I also love a cup of coffee. So if you want to give me more energy to do more recipes, feel free to buy me one. Links in the description below. And don't forget, no matter what, I love you. See you later, okay? Bye!